to the boat review from Barnes Brinkcraft aboard their new dual helm cruiser Brinks Rhapsody which represents a sea change in technology and internal fit out of hire boats on the Norfolk Broads. I'm going to be taking you through the tour of this boat from the stern, the rear, all the way to the bow or the front of the boat and once we've completed that I'll take you outside to show you what it looks like and some of the features that you can expect. This is a 44 foot long boat by 12 foot wide so do expect this review to be a bit longer than usual so make yourself a cuppa sit down and enjoy as we take a tour of this absolutely sensationally fitted out new cruiser for 2014 to the Barnes Brinkcraft fleet. So you join me here in the rear double cabin which is also on suite and it really is something special in fact this whole boat the way it's fitted out has been quite amazingly done I've not seen a boat of this type fitted out to this standard if you look at the other boats that are available, this is an Alpha 44 dual helm or flybridge cruiser. So if you know what I'm talking about, have a look at Herbert Woods, Royale Light, Sovereign Light. Bolero from Richardson's is a similar design as well. But what makes this different is how it's engineered outside, inside, as do with fit out, but also the technology that's packed into it. So that technology makes itself apparent right away just with the lighting that's in this rear cabin together with the entertainment that's on offer as well as the comforts. So let's have a look. So as you can see first of all we've got the double berth here in the rear cabin and it really is lovely. It's full width which is often unusual on boats to have a proper size double berth but it is and the mattress is super soft it's almost when you first sort of lay on it you think is that memory foam but it's not it, it, it's just a really lovely density of foam that's not too firm and not too soft really comfortable to sleep on very supportive as you can see the fit out of the boat is absolutely wonderful and they've not even used like pure brilliant white headlining and side linings but they're not really cream either they're just this really soft neutral natural color almost like a soft magnolia this complements the curtains that they've chosen they're not gold they're more kind of like a champagne color with a metallic embroidered uh, leaves and design on that really adds a touch of class and luxury and in the evening when these are closed helps reflect some of the light back into the cabin and that's the real theme of this whole boat is light and airiness with luxury as you can see of course naturally we've got our holly antique flooring throughout but it's also the other areas this is a light oak uh, veneer that they've used here and this is the first of our hanging space as you can see it's full height and they provide you with a really lovely selection of hangers which is useful and something other boatyards could do with learning from it's nothing more annoying than coming away and not having enough hangers to hang up your clothes as we move over here you'll see some of the storage that starts to make itself apparent on the boat again this is veneered in walnut which actually complements the oak really well but what I love about this is the sheen on it it's absolutely beautiful it's the type of furniture that you might expect to find in a fitted bedroom at home the drawers run really smooth on their runners and close lovely and softly and as you can see some of them are really very deep indeed as well so you can bung a lot of stuff in these drawers again the workmanship throughout is second to none power on this boat is not a problem every cabin has power sockets we've got one here but we also find another one down here a double socket and this I'll draw your attention to the LED mood lighting that comes around the berth now while you might think this is a little bit of a gimmick trust me at night to have this to see where you're going without disturbing you with overhead lighting or just to make a nice moody romantic feel to the place it's absolutely lovely and it's good I think they used white and not a coloured light 
Moving over here we've got the central heating that runs throughout the boat. Now whilst it ejects warm air, it's not the usual warm air diesel heating system. It's a wet system. It boils water. Then, just like at home with your central heating, a pump pumps that hot water throughout matrixes. Now if you're not sure what a matrix is, I'm not talking about the film. This is a unit that's much the same as an air conditioner or the heater in your car. It's basically a series of fins and pipes that the hot water goes through and then a fan behind it blows air over the vanes, thus transferring heat into the cabin. But the great thing about this is just like at home, it's fully thermostatically controlled for each cabin. Over here we've got our light switches, as you can see, nice and chrome. And the top switch turns now on the LED spotlights on and off. But by holding it in, we can set them infinitely dimmable. The bottom switch over here controls our underbed lighting. You get a full length mirror, which is nice to see on a boat. How many boats do you get full length mirrors? And just look at the space. This is a great boat for three couples. And as we go through the boat, you'll see why. Every cabin, even the smallest, still has a good amount of storage, hanging space, and just space to stand up to get ready. There's two heads or toilets on this boat. One, a large one with a full, almost domestic size shower, and the other a more traditional fare. I'll show you those in a moment. Now, I mentioned earlier about entertainment, and as you can see, we've got our own TV in the cabin. This is connected to a free view system and the aerial they're using is an omnidirectional aerial which means you don't need to get out the boat and faff around with pointing in the left or the right direction, up a bit, down a bit. You just leave it there and I haven't had a problem anywhere I've gone with receiving great TV pictures. The televisions are quality. They're really nice to be able to have a side-on view with an LCD television but yet still be able to see the picture as well as straight ahead so the screen in these are nice as well of course you've got your remote control it's also a DVD player you can bang in a CD and play that too you can bring some films on a USB stick you can play those back on it as well if they're in the right format so we're really talking about having a good entertainment system for each cabin let's go and have a look at the heads which are on suite in here through this door as you can see, the mood lighting changes in the heads to a cool blue colour. This, whilst some may say is a bit of a gimmick, I think looks absolutely lovely and it really does make a nice change when you come out of the shower and it's just this beautiful blue glow, especially cool at night. But let's have a look at the practical side of things. First of all, we've got a really nice toilet, it's all china. And as you can see, it's just like the sort you have at home. It's not too high off the ground, it's not too low. It's a Vita system, and this is an all-electric system. All you do is you have a switch here. Press it one way to fill the toilet. Let go, and press the other button to flush the toilet. Simple as that. You've also got in here a lovely mirror as well and a heated towel rail. You'll be surprised how useful it is to have a heated towel rail not just for warm fluffy towels which are provided with this boat when you take it over but also just for the warmth in the heads just imagine hiring this on an early spring day it just makes all the difference. You've got a beautiful hand basin here with a simple way of uh, using the plug. Just push in, push out, full mixer tap. Soap dish, tooth mug, big nice frosted, proper frosted glass window. Some really nice head height. Again, we've got these super bright LEDs in here. But the real piece de resistance is this shower. Now, while this isn't unique to this boat, you'll find this on other Alpha 44 moulds, it is so nice to have a proper shower. That slides round. It's full height. I'm not exactly small, but there was no trouble at all having a shower in here. Let me just point out some of the features in here. 
we've got a full thermostatically controlled system. So what's brilliant is that you set the temperature you're comfortable with. It's uh, in the middle at 38 degrees, but maybe you want it a bit hotter, maybe you want it a bit cooler. And when you come again, you don't have to faff around with the controls, all bit hot, bit cold, bit up. No, you just leave it and then turn the shower on. And within a few seconds, it's coming through. Another point I want to make about this boat is that it doesn't have an accumulator. Accumulator is basically a tank that fills with pressure and water. And it means that when you first turn the tap on, the pump doesn't have to activate straight away. Now, on most higher boats, they don't have these, by the way, these accumulators, but some do. Um, but on most higher boats, when you turn the tap on just a little bit, what happens is, is the water pump will pulse, okay? But it doesn't really on this boat at all. It's just a steady flow because it's a variable speed pump. So that's just on low, but if I turn it up onto high, the pump speeds straight up and provides a really good flow of water. So I thought that was worth pointing out because it's something a little bit different. This again is the full perspex screen. It's beautiful on its runners and once it's shut there's no water gets here. This is a, a trap here. It directs all of the water that's coming down the sides in there and to the plug which of course there's no messing around with buttons to empty the thing. It's all automatic and it just empties itself for you. So that's the head and that's the rear cabin because you've got your doors outside these large windows so I hope you're getting a sense on the camera of how bright how airy how spacious this is let's go and look at the smallest double cabin of three on this boat so behind me is where we've just come through from the stern cabin and then off on our right hand side is the mid double cabin so let's go in. We've got these beautiful fitted doors. Again, it's all this light oak veneer. I mean, the time and effort that it goes into making all of this wood and putting these strips on and everything else, the headlining, it's seamless. And look at the size of this berth. This is the mid cabin. Usually mid cabins on boats, they're squashed away, they're low down, they're pretty horrible. Not on this boat. Once again, we've got this beautiful walnut veneered drawer system. We've got another large mirror. Again, we've got our own independent heating. So now you're getting a sense that if you're maybe two or three couples that come on this boat or a family, that this is about being afloat on the Norfolk Broads, enjoying all of what that has to offer, all of the sights, the sounds, the landscapes, the nature, all of that and yet having to worry not at all about foregoing any of the things that you usually have at home, such as your central heating, hot water on demand, 240 volt electrics, and not having to think, oh, is that gonna drain the batteries? Just go ahead and use it. Wanna bring your hair straighteners? Bring your hair straighteners. High powered hair dryer? Bring your high powered hair dryer. Not a problem on this boat. This is about luxury and making sure that the people that hire this have nothing to worry about. But let's carry on with our tour. So as I mentioned, this is the double berth and as you can see, it's another full width, full length, and yep, there's another TV. This is all into the same system, but you can have whatever channel you wanna watch on this. So you could have people next door to you watching you know, BBC One, while in here you could be watching Dave. It doesn't matter because it's all on an amplified separate system so there's no loss in picture quality despite having all of the TVs on and as you can see this is the same great picture DVD player bring your music whatever you want to do the remote control as well you can just lay back in bed and enjoy it you've got some windows up here which also open to let the fresh air in on a nice day that by the way is the upper helm and then down here we've got our beautiful LED lights again. And again, these are all dimmable. So if you just want them on nice and dim, that's not a problem. And look at this. This is the uh, upholstery that they've used. And it's just wonderful. It's this neutral color, but it's got a nice little design. It's not bright red or deep blue. You know, it's just neutral. It just really works in this boat. It just works with the oak, it works with the soft cream headlinings. 
it just perfectly matches everything. Again we've got our 240 volts down here and we've got our mood lighting along here which again we can turn off. Here is the heater outlet with the, the matrix that I was talking about earlier. And of course we've got more hanging space behind the door here and look at this, this is wonderful. You open the door and on comes the light. And this is proper hanging space. That's the sort of hanging space you expect to get at home, not on a boat. And again, even this, just the simple wardrobe doors, you can just see the quality, the automatic switch for turning the, the light on in there, on and off. Again, we've got our chrome switches here for our dimmable LEDs and our mood lighting down here. And as I say, this is the smallest of the cabins, so I can stand here, if you're with a partner, you could both stand in here, get ready in the morning. You've got your large drawers here, you've got your socket down here, you've got your wardrobe, everything here is self-contained. Anyway, let's move on to the main saloon of the boat. So as you can see, here is the door to the rear cabin and over here is the door to the mid cabin. And then the companionway, we see the first of this work surface. Um, it's a faux granite, um, but it's been beautifully polished and curved. There's no sharp edges anywhere in it. Goes back up here to join the linings. Now they could have used something like a deep blue or a grey, you know, but this is a beautiful neutral natural mottled effect. And look how well it works with our soft cream linings, our curtains, the oak, the walnut and the holly antique flooring. Let's just have a look at all of those colours in one. Now I don't know who designed the interior at Barnes Brinkcraft, whether it was a man or a woman or a combination of people being shown samples saying what do you think, do you think this would work or not, but spot on Barnes Brinkcraft, I think it's just right. It's really light and airy, it's luxurious without being too posh or ostentatious, it's not tacky, it's just bang on. Anyway, back to the features. So we've got here our double 240 volt socket, beautifully chromed as you can see. This is the light switch here. Let's just have a look at this in closer detail. As you can see, it's a simple push button and it works beautifully and the controls the LEDs up here. Down here, as you saw before, we had drawer space in the uh, rear cabin and the mid cabin. It continues out here and again, it's this super soft movements on these drawers. As we move around here though we start to see the first of our cabinets and also what you'll see as well is this accent lighting that's a feature throughout this boat that washes down and really brings out the sheen on our walnut veneer here and inside the cabinet well that is a hoover. So that's absolutely brilliant Great job Barnes Brinkcraft for including a hoover in here because even when you're careful, you know what it's like, you moor up, you get on the boat a few times and then in the evening you're padding around in your socks and you step on a stone and it's like, oh God. And then what, you've got to get the broom out and the bucket and the dustpan and brush, all of that messing around, well don't bother. It's a proper hoover, it comes with the attachments and it just makes keeping the boat clean and tidy or you know, vacuuming these uh, these dust mats that are throughout the boat really easy. And yes, they even supply you with a hairdryer. So let's have a look as we come into the main saloon up here. You just see it opens out before you and look at that beautiful open plan saloon. It's got this wonderful headlining with these walnut strips again, as you can see. So there's no sort of um, headlining studs or you know, creases, staples, none of that malarkey going on in this boat here. And again, we've got our accent lighting that's under here. And we've got the LED lighting here. In fact, let's take a look at what this boat looks like and how it comes alive in the evening. Okay, so this is how I've got things set up at the moment. And of course, the camera isn't picking things up quite as the human eye does. And there may be some flickering on the screen at the present time. But this gives you an idea of the ambience here in the saloon. As you can see, we've got lighting from many different sources. We've got some mood lighting, if you want to call it, 
um, I call it accent lighting really from down here it follows all the way through to the galley it's under um, all of the worktops lighting up the cabinetry and then of course over here you've got the LED light strips uh, for where the curtains are and of course then you've got your spotlights here now that's nice enough but we can control this very precisely so for example maybe you want to have things a bit more toned down maybe in a romantic mood let's turn off that let's bring that now down a, a notch and we've got a bit more warmth now now of course what we can do is these spotlights here they're fully controllable and fully dimmable with this uh, switch over here as you can see here it's a stainless steel uh, switch with these beautiful recess buttons that big thing there is the thermostat for the saloon central heating system so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn everything off and now we've just got our accent lighting here just lighting up the floor so you can see where you're going but up here it's all in darkness so that's brilliant imagine you're sitting here at the table and you're watching a movie so now you know the really you've got the TV screen in but when you go up you know I'm gonna go down to the galley make a cup of coffee it's not in darkness or maybe you're gonna go get some wine out the cooler that's that's really what you can do with this here now of course you can turn these off as well and that's done um, by pressing a button in the uh, the switch panel here as you can see now we're in complete darkness spooky spooky as Halloween approaches So I'll just turn that back on again. Now let's have a play with these lights here. As I said, they're fully uh, controllable. So what I'm just going to do is I'm going to turn them all on and really shower the place in light. So now imagine you're going to be having your dinner. You want a nice bright light for the table while you're eating. Maybe you're reading a book. Now the whole place is completely lit up, completely bathed in light on the floor, from the ceiling, the curtains, everywhere. Down there you've got separate LEDs that you can turn on. As you can see that, that accent lighting runs all the way through. And so you can go from really bright to really moody just with a simple button push. That I think is brilliant. But we can turn these down. Let's turn these down a bit. So I'm just dimming these down. You see those going dimmer now? You just hold the button in and let go when you've reached your desired level. Now let's just come down here to the galley. Again, we've got the accent lighting up all of this here under the surfaces. And we've also here got our light switch which mimics that. So if we're down here we can you know turn lights on or off and we can dim them and this one here in the center again fully dimmable but this is for our galley lighting. Now some boats it can be a bit dim in the galley but it's evening you've got some cooking on the go you've got lighting right over the electric hob and the sink as you can see coming around here everything is all lit up beautifully but again if you want to have these on but just a bit dimmer you can and in fact actually what you can do is you can get them really dim so you can almost sort of leave these on super dim you see they're virtually not lighting anything up maybe just leave these on turn everything else off go to bed someone in the evening needs to come and use the heads they can and, and it's going to be lit up for them without being, you know, all of this bright stuff being lit up. Now because the uh, the lighting in here is a bit dimmer now, the camera just taking time to focus there. I also want to draw attention to the curtains here. They're not gold, they're kind of like a champagne colour in, in real life. I don't know if that's coming out on the camera, but they're almost metallic. Especially some of the accents with the flowers and the the leaves here and that helps bring back the light into the saloon and what with these high gloss cabinetry doors as well it just really brings the whole place to to light now because over here we've got our outside screens on so complete privacy and you know that adds a degree of insulation as well and of course up here as well we've got those covered as well and round here as well we've got our hatch here which also I've put the cover on 
so everything in the boat in the evening is beautifully cosy it's dry there's no drafts whatsoever you also find there's no vents that that can give you know some drafts or some noise as the wind blows this boat fully electric no need for you know ventilation because of gas appliances or a gas cooker or whatever and I've certainly found that contrary to some people saying you've got to have more ventilation the better on a boat with everything all sort of done up there's no condensation I've not suffocated and it feels just like at home it feels dry not damp so anyway that's a little look in the saloon and around the galley here in the evening on board Brinks Rhapsody so I hope you found that interesting watching how this boat looks in the evening time the controllability of all of the lighting as uh, Carousel from Richardson's another beautiful luxury cruiser goes past Maud here on the moorings at Howe Hill doing this review and very beautiful they are too but as you saw you can really control the lighting in this boat and this is the absolutely fabulous saloon now people that may have hired boats in this class, similar design such as Brinks Lullaby, Brinks Melody you notice something's a bit different about this boat because there's more space the galley which sometimes is down here is not, we've got all of our cabinetry um, more cupboard space here as you can see great TV again, it's the same TV throughout and even on this bright day look at that picture quality really bright crystal clear quality reception no artifacts on the screen whatsoever and again we've got this beautiful work surface that runs through and again the lighting under here however there is one negative it took me almost an hour to find out where it was because you see I'd seen these speakers and let me just point out these are proper speakers not this tinny rubbish no bass audio these are quality decent speakers thank goodness they've made their way aboard a higher boat if you're listening to a little bit of classical music maybe you want a bit of rock it's not even about having the volume up loud loudness isn't quality people it's the richness the smoothness and the bass and these speakers are wonderful just to have it on low at night and you just feel that richness of sound filling the cabin lovely speakers but where the hell's the radio cd player well for some reason they've put it in this cupboard under there I'm not quite sure why but um, here it is anyway and it does mean when you want to change the volume or change the station or put another CD in you've got to open the cupboard bend down and get in however you can also plug in through an auxiliary cable your iPod or your iPhone or whatever other music system you're going to be using and even if you want to bring something like you know a set of speakers you know you can get these portable Bose systems and stuff you could plug those in over there and have them here and really fill the, the, the saloon with your own choice of music so entertainment on this boat is covered again beautiful lined cupboards and just really great storage space but as we come up look at this beautiful table this is one of the few boats because they've decided to do away with another mid cabin which would normally be down there which is where the galley is they've opened up this saloon hugely and as you can see this is one of the few boats where you can have the full complement of crew around a fixed table none of that faffing with you know folding a table up and putting it away again and look at the quality of the table you know this is solid wood and we've got it inlaid with this really nice stuff so if someone brings a hot plate or a bowl to the table and puts it down on here it's not going to ruin everything this is good to very high temperatures it's not going to melt um, and and I just think it's beautifully engineered and shaped this will convert into another double so you know if you've got people visiting you can lower the table down and you can make this into another double but really this boat is about having maybe two possibly three couples or a, a family you know you could have the kids with you and you know mum and dad and and everybody have their own space I mean just think about that you know you treat the kids they come away they can be in the front cabin 
bring the Xbox with them, plug it into the television, there's 240 volts everywhere, they can be doing their thing in that cabin, mum and dad can be enjoying a glass of wine in here, and really enjoying it. It's a boat that, as I said earlier in the mid cabin, it's about just doing what you want to do, enjoying the Norfolk Broads in complete luxury, and not having to sort of make do or compromise. One of the features you also see missing is the stairs from the upper helm. They've gone, which means that all of this can be used as seating, and it means that the mid berth, which is behind here, can be higher and extended out more. Let's talk about the power systems on this boat. This is an electric hybrid boat. There is an engine, it's a beta marine engine, and it supplies power when required. But this looks incredibly complicated, but I'm going to take you through it quite simply. This is our domestic voltages. This is reading 95% full. This is our motor voltage, which is reading 100% full, as you can just see there. We've got our battery switches, none of the old fashioned ones where you turn them. This is just a case where if there was a problem, you slide it over, you press the off button and it disables that circuit. So that's a nice thing to have. The generator will start on demand, but you can also run it yourself. So if it was needed to recharge the drive battery, maybe the inverter was on, you know, it will just kick in, but you can stop it. So you can make it so it won't just kick in in the middle of the night, but it would only have to do it when these percentages come down. Now let's just bear in mind, I'm recording this, as you can see the time now is coming up to 25 to 11 in the morning. I've been on my mooring all night, I had the TV on, I had the radio on, I used my laptop last night, I cooked my dinner, and we're at 94.9% on our domestics. You don't need to have the generator, and by the way I also had the heating on last night as well. So this has 18 batteries, six solar panels on the roof of the boat because of the fact that as you can see it's a beautiful sunny day today, that's charging up all of the time. So the generator use really isn't going to be need to be a worry. Don't think, oh god, this is going to be really noisy and as you've heard, if you watch the rest of the blog you'll hear the generator inside and outside for sound comparisons. But let's talk about the generator. So this is the sound of the generator running, except really what you're hearing, if you can hear this, is air. It's fans. It's not the sound of the engine. There's a huge bank of chargers on this boat that charge the drive batteries and the domestic batteries. There's 18 batteries, there's a 12 and 24 volt system for the domestics, and I presume far more volts for the, the drive system. Perhaps, you know, 48, 72, I don't know, but a lot. A lot of amps and a lot of volts. When these chargers are going, they're pulling 5 kilowatts and they generate a lot of heat. And there has to be fans to get rid of that heat. And that's what you've got down here. And you can really feel the blast of air coming out of here. So that's the charger fans that are blasting the air out to keep those cool. But as we move to the back of the boat here, this is where the generator is located under here in this area here and of course the generator itself needs a lot of air to breathe because it's combusting the air, it's a diesel generator and it also gets quite warm. Now although you've got to have water cooled just like a boat engine with the exhaust on the other side this here is another vent which is again putting out vast quantities of, of air and indeed when the decks are um, wet, this whole patch here is completely dry because this is quite warm. It's as powerful as a hairdryer, just to give you an idea. Think of your sort of 1200 watt hairdryer, that's the, the sort of the air, the volume that's coming out of there and, and similar in sort of heat. So if you're moored next to this boat and the generator fires up, this is the sound that you would get. It's completely different to an engine running. It's a higher frequency and it's not, that frequency is not going to permeate through to the next door boat. But this generator doesn't just come in every time you're more, oh, I've got to make a cup of coffee, turn the generator on. You know, let's put the toaster on, turn the generator on. It only comes in 
when it needs to come in. Now I've put it on manual just for this demonstration outside. You can put it on manual if you want to, um, but as I say, in normal procedure, in a good day, and because today is very grey, but on a on a summer's day there'd be more than enough solar generation of, of power for your domestic capacity and only in extreme circumstances when say you've got the oven on, three hobs on, the kettle's boiling, the tellies are on, would then the generator think I need to kick in to generate more power for the inverter. So I hope that was interesting just to give you an idea of the noise levels outside the boat but what's it like inside the boat when the generator's running? Let's go and find out. So now you join me in the saloon of this boat and the generator's still running so this is how it sounds when you're in here maybe you're sat down you're watching the telly you're cooking your food you're just sat having a quiet time let's just listen so I don't know if you can pick that up let me just move the camera to a slightly different position I think you'll find that that is a, a very well insulated uh, experience inside the boat it's not the same sound as if you had to run the engine on a boat you know on a normal a normal higher boat where you know you might have an evening where it's uh, you've got the heating on and the heating goes out because the batteries aren't up to the job to, to power the heating and you've got to start the engine in some boats where the engine is underneath the floor it's not usually insulated and it's quite a noisy experience inside and then your neighbors outside because have got the noise of the engine and the exhaust and all the rest of it so rather than this being a case of oh it's got a generator that's going to be noisy it really isn't and in fact the most noisy part of the generator is when you actually turn it off and the whole boat shudders so i'm just going to go through that procedure now i'm going to press the generator stop and there the generator is now stopped so now that's the difference no generator You've also got your main tanks for your toilets, forward and aft, your water tank and your fuel tank. Of course this uses diesel to put in the generator, um, so that is just a, a thing with a normal boat where you'll pay your normal fuel deposit and what you don't use you'll get back. So if you're very frugal and you don't go very fast and you don't go very many places and you don't need to have the generator kicking in much, you won't use very much fuel. Of course here is all of your switches for the different um, things that you might want to switch off such as you know the water pump at night but that has never cut in on this boat at all I've never had anything to, to worry about there. The heating um, is auto so it will come on on a timer in the morning and in the afternoon and in the evening automatically and then of course you use your thermostats to control how hot it gets in the boat and where it gets hot or you can have it off or you can have it on all the time. Should you need to start the generator manually for whatever reason you can start the generator manually then you can stop it there and if something does go wrong and you know things are going off then there's a power reset button but if anything happens with any electrics on any boat just simply call the boat yard and be advised by them so that's your kind of domestic side that's what you need to worry about on this side here is your 240 volt side which really is just like your standard fuse panel at home so if one of those trips there's a reason for it and if you reset any trips again give up call the boat yard they even put their number there so that's kind of thing where you're dealing with the 240 volt side of things and obviously that's going to be a, a more dangerous issue for example if uh, you know one of the charger things kept tripping for example then you're going to want to call them but they're hidden away behind the smoked perspex and of course you've got all this space here to put stuff you've got a hatch here which is really useful actually because you can open this hatch and you know when someone's driving there because that's the steering wheel there you can actually talk to them hey do you want a cup of coffee do you want some biscuits yeah okay and you know pass them up so doing away with the stairs isn't actually as big a deal as you might think because let's face it the hatch was very small it could leak um, the stairs are very steep down into here and well do away with the stairs it's a bit like when Broom decided let's do away with the internal helm and just have it outside you suddenly get a lot more space so we've looked at the table we've looked at the saloon we've looked at the lighting I'll just point out we've also got these beautiful large big sunroofs 
So even on the summer you can open everything up. And let's just look at this headlining again. Look at this, it's beautiful. It's all cushioned. This beautiful walnut stripping. It's just perfect, flawless. Do you like champagne or wine? Then don't put it all in the fridge. Maybe you just want to chill some Cokes or some beers. Don't worry guys, there is a 24 bottle wine cooler on this boat. Look at that. This is the sort of boat where you can just come aboard, as I say, you can load it up with stuff, keep your drinks separate to your domestic food in the refrigerator and enjoy it. So it's a really nice boat. Let's come and have a look at the helm. So here is the helm on this boat, as you can see the internal helm. And um, shall we fire it up and see what this baby can do? Okay then. So first of all you've got your log. Uh, this can be turned on and off, just in case you might want to. Um, it does light up a, a kind of an orange glow at the evening, so you might want to just turn that off just uh, to have that you know, not glowing at you. But this is your speed log. This is accurate to 0.1 of one mile an hour and um, it's brilliant it's big it's perfect it's got a big sensor on the roof of the boat so very precise indeed and it will also show you how far you know you've gone you can reset the trip so if I press trip it's done 23.1 miles if I hold trip and let it count down when it gets to zero that will reset our trip there we go so now we've done zero miles. So you might want to reset that. Maybe you're going to cruise from Roxham to Stalham. How many miles did we do? Oh, we did this many miles. Right, down in the book. Maybe you want to do that and then reset it. Um, you know, And then because the total this boat has done is 62.3 miles. Or is that 623? It could be 623. I think it is. You can just see that with a reflection. Anyway, that's your GPS um, speed. As I said, it's in miles an hour, and so it's very easy to keep to the speed limits. Here we've got a USB um, charger, but look at this. We've got 5 volts at 1 amp and 5 volts at 2.1 amps. Now, what does that mean, people? Well, that means that you plug your phone in the top one, but if you bring in a tablet, like an iPad, which requires more juice, well, you can plug that in as well. It's not just a simple USB charger, it's a comprehensive USB charger. Underneath is your standard accessory lighter socket, otherwise known as a cigarette lighter socket that you get on your car. Then you've got your control setting. You know on other flybridge boats where you have to pull a lever and turn it and click it back in? You just press it on this one. There we are, we're downstairs now or upstairs. This is our generator or eco mode. Just leave it in eco, the generator will kick in when you want. You get about five hours cruising time before the generator needs to fire up. When it does fire up, it'll come on for maybe 20 minutes, half an hour, and then it will kick off again. You really won't notice much difference. This is the throttle, although it's more just a speed controller than a throttle. As you can see, it's not what you normally get on a boat. Down here is your thrusters, bow, stern, both so you can go sideways or swivel for 360 control. Don't overuse that, use it for between sort of five and ten seconds. It is an electric motor, it does get hot, it consumes an awful amount of amps, and it will eventually, if you use it too much, there's a thermal cutout and it will stop working and you won't be able to use it until it's all cooled down again. So this is just for quick bursts, you know, when you're coming into more as required. That's it, otherwise there's no gauges on, it's not like oil pressure or RPM and everything else. You've just got this screen in the middle. We've got dual wipers, the horn, the log which I told you about, and the mystery switch. It's always good to have a mystery switch, but it's not red, so even though I clicked it, no harm can be done, because if that was a red switch, then we probably would have just blown up half of Norfolk. The only thing is the alarm stop, which if that goes off, stop. There's the boatyard number, there's the bridge height, 8 foot 3. So let's go. So imagine we're ready to go. We're all right, right, yep, yeah, okay, ready to go. Right, let's start the engine. Oh, well there's the engine started and now we're ready to go. That's um, silent, yeah. Um, we've got a green light so we know that we're good for down here to control the boat. We've got 4 hours and 47 minutes on the battery. We've got our RPM, 
we've got our time and we've got our number of hours. It's done 235 hours. And that's basically as simple as you get. You lift that up, you put it in forward, and as you can see, the RPMs start to go up. But look at this, I can be so precise, 203, 198 RPMs, 189, you know, it's just, you know, frankly amazing. And, and instant readouts, and even in the bright sunshine you can read this screen and you can see how fast you're going. And when you've moored up and you've done all of what you need to do, just like, just turn it off. And that's it, there's a clonk, and now the boat is off, just like you've turned the engine off. Down here we've got a speaker for the stereo, a very big heater matrix. This boat would be so good when the weather's inclement, you know, in the autumn and stuff, or the spring when it's chilly. And as you can see, imagine if you're going along down here, everybody can be sat and talking and interacting and enjoying themselves. So that's the helm, the saloon, the rear cabin, the mid cabin. Let's move down to the galley. So one of the themes as I've been doing this tour for you is about no compromise. It's about all of the luxuries from home on board a boat without having to worry about anything. Well, the galley, not so much galley, more like domestic kitchen. So here is the galley and as you can see, this is where normally on these boats you might have another berth, but not on here. Again, we've got our accent lighting that runs all the way along here. But look at this. This is the oven, it's fan assisted. I've just put the oven on, but the generator's not come on. No worries on this boat, you can put the oven on. Do you want to boil a kettle full of water? Yeah, it's an electric kettle, you don't need to do all that putting uh, you know, the kettle on the hob and waiting for it to boil and then it whistles and you've got to stop what you're doing. Yes, we're boiling water and no, the generator hasn't cut in. Shall we have the kettle on and put the oven on? Okay. There's no need to worry on this boat. There's no compromise on this boat. There's a microwave, there's a toaster, there's a full height width domestic refrigerator. We've got a sink, we've got the drainer, we've got proper wine glasses, we've got a teapot, cafetiere, we've got decent utensils, even the china on this boat is of high quality. This isn't even just a halogen hob, it's an induction hob. Now what this means is, is that basically this creates an electromagnetic field because magnetism and electricity, they're the same. And instead of this getting hot, it makes the pan get hot. Now it's important I tell you this because some people, and I'm included, like to bring our nice non-stick pans from home with us. If you're hiring this boat, Make sure that your pan, that if you want to bring, there's no need because there's a lovely pans and crockery on this boat, but if you are going to bring it, make sure it's induction um, because some metals are not and you might find that you'll put it on and it won't work because as I said, it's the pan, the actual metal in the pan that gets hot. So it also means that if stuff boils over the pan and it goes on here, this doesn't get super hot, it won't all bake on and cause problems. This is cool. Not cool that you could just take the pan off and touch it. It's still going to have residual heat from the metal going into the glass surface. But isn't that lovely to have a proper oven? It's got a grill as well so if you want to grill sort of some fish in there you can. It's not just an oven as I say it's fan assisted. It's also one of these ones where you can there's a button here for adding moisture so you know your baking doesn't dry out too much. And this is just absolutely lovely. Loads of storage again, loads of window space, the lighting up here and just behind us over here, this is our lighting control for the, the, the saloon lighting. So you can control that from down here and you can turn off the lights in the galley as well. And it's just so spacious. So let's have a look at the day heads, which are for everyone to use, the mid cabin and the forward cabin. So this is far more kind of usual. It's much smaller. Um, you've still got your heated towel rail, of course, and you've still got your thermostatically controlled shower, but it's the sort where you'll need to use the shower curtain. 
and it's the sort where you'll need to press the shower tray pump to empty the shower out of the drain down here and as you can see it's just a much more traditional head it's not as spacious but it is fitted out to that same high quality with our accent lighting here we've got our nice LEDs here we've got the proper frosted glass and of course in here as well we've also got the same lovely Vetus toilet system so this is a simple place but extremely well fitted again we've got a full-size mirror here so even in the smallest room they haven't scrimped on quality or the fit out even so let's have a look now at our final destination inside the boat the forward cabin so the forward cabin of course comes off of the galley here and again it's in this beautiful oak veneer and as you can see it's a typical forward cabin this is one of the smallest spaces on a boat of course because the bow tapers to the front but that doesn't mean you can't have a lovely double berth and again another TV more thermostatically controlled heating but also as you can see seating and as we come inside you'll see we've got our lovely hanging space in here and once more we've got this drawer system here as you can see again just throughout the boat the same kind of accents come everywhere so as I said to you it is a full size double as you can see and again we've got a mirror here we've got our dimmable LED lighting and even in this cabin we've got our 240 volt socket we've got our accent lighting coming down here and I can just imagine you know you're sat here maybe your other half's having a nice lay down in bed you can be sat here talking to them you've got the TV over here as well which by the way can move in this cabin so you know to get the best angle maybe you're sitting here you want it that way again that's your thermostat that's the winch fuse on off which you just leave on all the time of course you've also got a nice skylight in here and as you can see it's just a really nice place to be and so that's why I was saying earlier about being ideal for three couples or a family because everybody can have their own self-contained space they can have their entertainment whether it's on the TV or listening to some music and everything is of such a high quality I'm just going to talk to you about one of the technology features of this boat and then we'll go outside to finish the blog off so I said to you I'm moored up here on Howe Hill uh, mooring so we're in the middle of nowhere we could say and um, yet outside we've got an antenna which is pulling in a Wi-Fi signal and that means that I'm sat on my laptop here as you can see and I want to go onto the internet and look at something maybe I've brought my tablet with me or whatever so let's just uh, fire this up so I'm going to go down to the internet and open up my browser and this is how quickly this loads. So most of my computer isn't the fastest, so this is uh, it hasn't actually loaded the pages yet. So let's just let it catch up and load a page. So here we are on the BBC News website. So let's go and click something that hasn't been loaded. Let's go into the technology section and see that's the speed that we're getting. This is on the Norfolk Broads using the three mobile data network. Okay and this is the speeds we're expecting let's just go and have a look at Barnes Brinkcraft's new website so very quick that is Brinks Rhapsody on their, their homepage I know there's a lot of reflections at the present time but if you go to the website here and you go to Boating Holidays you'll be able to see um, all of what's changed on this website there's far more information that they speak about each boat elite fleet boats stand out here as we can see and I just wanted to demonstrate just some of the speed now this isn't a free service and how it works is as follows if you're going to be hiring this boat and they may be well adding it to some of their other elite boats they're using the three mobile network for their data provider I use three with my own dongle and I found it absolutely excellent throughout the broads but my dongle's just little and it hasn't got an outside antenna so you can imagine that with the outside antenna it really pulls in a good signal 
I haven't found a location where I haven't been able to get the three mobile data connection coming into the boat. But you do have to pay for it and you can't pay for it by credit card. And Barnes Brinkcraft can't give you a voucher. But what you need to do is you go to a shop, say like Roy's, or even before you come on holiday and go to a shop and buy a £15 three top-up voucher. Okay, bring that away with you and when you get your laptop or your tablet it will say on the page you've run out of data. Click here to top up. Follow the instructions, they're in the skipper's manual, it's quite simple though. And eventually you choose £15 which buys you 3 gigabytes of data, you put the voucher number in, restart your device and hey presto you've got the internet. And because it's on board Wi-Fi, if you're a family with kids or if someone's got a Kindle Fire, someone's got an iPad, someone's brought their laptop, they can all connect at the same time just like at home. But be aware if you're going to be watching things like iPlayer for example, streaming music and movies, this is going to be sucking up that data and three gigabytes will go quickly. So it might be worth getting a couple more vouchers. I prefer the three gigabyte one because it's not too much, it's not too little, 15 pounds. There are other boat yards that do give away dongles and data with you. They use Vodafone. I've heard rumours that they're not as good. The Vodafone network. Three is the way to go on the Norfolk Broads as far as I'm concerned. I've never had any issues with it. And I think by incorporating a system professionally built into the boat with an external antenna is the way to go. So I just wanted to show you some of the speeds that we were getting with the page load times. And I hope that's just been of a little bit of help. Let's go outside and have a look at the outside of this fabulous boat. So you join me outside as we can see the full glory of Brinks Rhapsody. So now you know what it looks like and you're like, oh, it's that's what an Alpha 44 is. Yes, you've seen these all over the Norfolk Broads probably in their designs. But let's have a look at some of the differences that we're seeing. We've got our electric winch for the mud weight here. The buttons up and down are just here, so that's nice and easy. No pulling in the, the, the rope if it's stuck on the riverbed. It's got these huge so the panels and if you think thinking, well, why are they big aluminium framed ones and not nice ones that are just bonded and can be walked over? Well, it's where technology is basically ahead of the moulding, I believe, because as you can see, the boat is very curved and especially noticeable here, you can see the way that the moulding is. So it's it's just, you know, Barnes Print Craft buy the mould and then have to make the best they can with it. If that was, of course, filled in and high, they could then bond the flat solar panels on because it is a worry that when you put your outside curtains across and you walk across here if you just stepped up oh, you could break one of the panels and they're not cheap. That's the outside Wi-Fi antenna I was just talking about inside. That's the GPS receiver for the speed and that's the TV aerial and then there's even bigger solar panels on the roof of the boat. This is where it's sucking all that power in to charge those domestic batteries and make minimal use of that generator. We've also got here as you can see these little LED lights they run the length of the boat and make it really look lovely at night. It is electric hybrid as we already know. Beautiful wide side decks and there we have the glorious back of the boat. Again we've got our LED lights here, we've got our double doors here and our steps up to the outside helm. So let's just have a little look at those steps and upstairs. So as you can see we've got nice good handrail here. This is amazing stuff. It's not tech deck but it's similar but it can be cut uh, to be a sort of a faux teak. But it is so non-slip. It doesn't matter if it's swimming in water you just will not slip off of this. Up here we've got our seating area as you can see which is very comfortable. LED lighting as well. We've got a sun lounger for in the summer and we've got a seat that two can fit comfortably on but three at a pinch and we just step down here to our outside helm and as you can see we've got the different gauges and stuff very simple mirror image of what we had downstairs our thruster control our speed log control our display for our rpms our speed controller here our horn the log on and off and we've got our control select here. This is so you've gone from downstairs, you press it upstairs and now we can control from upstairs and again it's just the same as we saw earlier on. 
beautiful views from up here of the river ahead. Eight foot three, so not too high. All of this folds down, all of these fold down as well to get under bridges such as Ladham or St Olav's and others. It won't go under Beckles Old, Roxham of course or Potter Hyam. But I hope that gives you just an idea of just how much solar panel area we've got on the boat. And what a nice outside space they've created up here. So that people can be sitting or lying down, enjoying the day as they cruise along the Norfolk Broads. This is an extended rail, so again it's nice and safe, you've got the super non-slip stuff. And you just walk down here and back inside the boat. So if you are a couple that are competent with handling this kind of boat, you'll have unprecedented space and luxury. But maybe you're a couple of couples, friends, family, bring the grandkids. Everyone's welcome aboard on this boat. You all have outstanding luxury, space and quality. Brinks Rhapsody really represents the new standard in luxury, I think, on the Norfolk Broads. Well done to Barnes Brinkcraft. Thank you for letting me out on your new boat now on my own. I uh, promise I'll bring it back in one piece. It's been absolutely fabulous to spend a few days aboard and the people I've shown on board have all said the same thing. Wow. If you want to hire this boat, go to www.barnesbrinkcraft.co.uk. Call the office as they can sometimes have special offers throughout the year, such as late booking deals. So you might want to follow them on Facebook as well to keep ahead of those offers. From here on the lovely Norfolk Broads, thanks for watching the boat review with the Captain's Blog.